Lesson 10 1 assignment for the figure on the right, find the following. 1A, name the circle. So, to name a circle, all you have to do is just look at the center point of that circle that you're looking at. So, if I were to zoom in, this right here is the center point. So, we can see that's point A. So, therefore, this circle is called circle A. Because all I'm doing is just looking at the center point, and that's how you name the overall circle. 1B, name the center of the circle, which we already figured out. It's that center point. It's A. To name a point, you need to have a capital letter, or just call it point capital letter. So it's A, capital letter A, or point, point A. Number two, name the diameter. Now, a diameter is a chord. A chord is a segment where the endpoints are on the circle. And that same chord, if it goes through the center of the circle, then we call that the diameter. This right here, if I were to look at the circle, this is an example of a diameter. One, it's a chord. Two, that same chord is going through the center of the circle. How do I name this particular segment? Well, we just look at the endpoints. You can call this segment EC. So EC with a bar above it, or you can call that segment CE. So segment EC or segment CE. Both will suffice and they refer to the same segment slash diameter, if that makes sense. Uh, number four, name a chord that is not the diameter. Again, a chord is basically a segment where the endpoints are on the circle. This right here is a chord, so I can call this segment ED or segment DE. Number four, name each radius of the circle. First of all, the radius, you start from the center to the circle. So segment AB is an example of a radius. Uh, segment AE is another example. And segment AC is our last example. These are examples of radii, and radii is plural for radius. Also, another thing to keep in mind, the radius is always half the size of the diameter. Okay, so here's my diameter, and half of that is this or this. Okay? Number five, name three arcs of the circle. Okay, so arcs, this is an arc. We look at the endpoints, so E, B. So I can call this arc here, arc E, B, or arc B, E. Both will work, both directions will work. This right here is an arc, so I'm gonna go ahead and call that arc B, C, or arc C, B. I'm going to go ahead and use squiggly lines for that particular arc. And then this arc in blue, right, I went from E to B. But didn't we name something EB already? Well, yes, we did. This here is arc EB. Now, the arc in blue looks like it's eb as well but it's actually not okay and i'm going to go ahead and explain why so this here i call this eb two points because this is actually a minor arc and a minor arc is essentially an arc where it's less than 180 degrees this arc as you can see this is actually greater than 180 degrees so we actually need to have three points to name that arc in blue. You can call this arc EDB, or if you were to go the other direction, you can call that arc BDE. 
right? Again, with major arcs, you need to have three points. You can actually call this same arc without using point D. You can call this arc E, C, B, or arc B, C, E, okay? And you will, you will, you know, name that arc just by the direction you're going, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Um, number seven, name a minor arc and a major arc, each having the endpoints E and B. Okay, I've already explained that already. So what I want you to do is try to, you know, consider what I just said and then apply that to number seven. Uh, number six, I skipped number six. So I went from five to seven. Five and seven do relate to each other. Number six, it says, name each central angle of the circle having a measure of less than 180 degrees. Um, so with a central angle, the vertex must be at the center. So if I were to look at this angle, so here's a segment here, and here's a segment, and they join at point A, where point A is the center of the circle. This is a central angle, okay? So how do I name this angle? It would be angle uh, E... A, B, E, A, B, where A is the vertex, that's the middle letter. You have to write the vertex as the middle letter, or I should say the middle letter is always the vertex. So please make sure that you include that there. E and B, you can have B the first letter or E the first letter. It does not matter as long as A is written in the middle okay so angle e a b uh what about angle b a c is that a central angle yes because the vertex is at the center of the circle so i can call this angle b angle b a c again a has to be written in the middle because a is the vertex and you can also call that same angle angle C, A, B. And then over here, you can call this angle B, A, E if you want, but just uh, for your convenience, these are the two angles, or I should point over here, these are your two central angles that you need to uh, put as your answers. Okay. For the circle on the right, find each measure. Eight, the measure arc DE. So this looks like I'm going in the language or going to the language of algebra here. So I need a number. So the measure arc DE, this here is what I'm looking at. And here's the hint. So remember, the arc... The measure of an arc is equal to the measure of the central angle. So if you can figure out how long this angle here is, that's the answer to figuring out how long this arc here is, okay? And number nine, the measure arc AD, and please make sure you're understanding which arc you're referring to because this here is AD, and this here looks like it's AD, but it's not. This is what you're trying to look at because we're dealing with two points. It's a minor arc, so it's less than 180 degrees, okay? So if you were to figure out how long this arc here is, you have to look at the central angle. You can see that this angle... The measure of that angle is 60 deg 63 degrees, and then the measure angle here is 90. So if you add those two numbers up, that's how long this arc here is. Okay, so you can figure that out. Now, if this were trying, if this were to say uh, the measure arc A B D, then you would be looking at this arc here, not this arc. Okay, A D is not this. But 80 is this. That's what I'm trying to say. Number 10, it says find the value of X. Okay, so we have central angles here. All you need to know is that when you add up the central angles, you have to equal that to 360 degrees. So I will do X plus 125 
plus 155 equals 360. And then you're going to go ahead and do the algebra. And then that's the same thing. So if I look at 11, it's the same idea as 10. Just know that this angle here is 90 degrees, okay? So you're going to create an equation, set it equal to 360 degrees, and then solve for x. All right, 12 to 16. Let's do... Let me do this. So I have a circle and I have an angle where the vertex is on the circle. When the, when the, um, when you have an angle where the vertex is on the circle, then the measure of this angle is one half of the intercepted arc. So if I want to figure out this angle, and suppose that this here is, I don't know, 40 degrees, then that means that this angle is 20 degrees. Okay? If you were to go the other direction, and let's say that um, you want to find this arc here, and you're given that the measure of this angle is 50 degrees, then to figure out this arc, you have to take this number and multiply it by two. So this would be 100 and, oh, sorry, it, just, it would just be 100 degrees, okay? So let's look at 12. Uh, we have an inscribed angle where the vertex is on the circle. So all you have to do is to figure out this angle you look at the intercepted arc and then divide by 2. So what is 92 divided by 2? That's going to be 46 degrees. So this is 46 degrees. So this angle here is 46 degrees. Okay. Number 14, the measure arc AC. So this is what I'm looking at. And 24 degrees, yes, this is the degree symbol. I know it looks a little weird, but... Uh, how long is this angle? That angle is 24 degrees. So if I know that this angle here is 24 degrees, how long is that arc? And then number 16 I will do with y'all. Okay, so here's the thing. This here is my diameter. So that means that this arc is 180 degrees and then this arc here is 180 degrees okay so that means that this whole circle is 360 degrees note note that um what did i say so this arc is 180 degrees okay and then this arc this arc is 180 degrees but Note that this angle here intercepts this arc. So if I know that this whole arc here is 180 degrees, right? And this part here is 48 degrees, and what's left over? Well, I have to do 180 minus 48, which I need to figure out what that is. What is 180 minus 48? Y'all, again, I cannot do arithmetic in my head so it's 180 minus 48 that's 132 degrees okay so that means that this is the angle that i'm looking at this is angle s okay and this is the intercepted arc which is 132 degrees so if you're trying to figure out if you're trying to figure out angle s and you're given not really given, we just we had to figure that out. But let's say we're given this arc here. Well, here's 132. How long is this angle? Okay. Number 18 and also number 20. Let's do number 20. Um, it says find the measure angle C. Uh, know that from a theorem is that if you have, if I look at this angle... If I look at that angle, it intercepts this arc, okay? And if I were to look at this angle, it intercepts 
that same arc that we talked about a second ago. So what does that imply? It means that if that's the case, then these angles are congruent and these angles are congruent. Actually, do we know if these two angles are congruent? Let me go ahead and show you. Okay, so if I look at this arc, or sorry, if, they, if we look at this angle here, it intercepts this arc. And if we were to look at this angle, it intercepts that same arc. So yes, these angles are congruent to each other. And what am I looking for? I'm looking at measure angle C. So measure angle C is currently 5y minus 3. And that is congruent to measure angle D or equal to 4y plus 7. So I do 5y minus 3 equals 4y plus 7. So I get um, y equals 10. So if y is equal to 10, let's go ahead and plug that in to figure out measure angle C. It's 5 times 10 minus 3. Uh, 5 times 10 is 50 minus 3. That is 47 degrees. Okay, so that's 47 degrees. So that is how long measure angle C is. Number 24, 25, okay, we have uh, triangles involved. So what can I tell you? Well, first of all, this arc here is 180 degrees, right? And of course that arc is 180 degrees as well, but I don't really care about how long this arc here is. This is what you need to remember. Remember this is, uh, you can see that the angle's vertex is on the circle, that means that it intercepts this arc. And this arc here that's, uh, you know, squiggly, that's 180 degrees. So to figure out this angle here, that's half of 180. So that means that this is 90 degrees. So we have a right triangle. Remember, to figure out... Okay, so you can see that... These are my interior angles, and the sum of the interior angles of the triangle is 180. So let's go ahead and do x plus 2x plus 90, which is equal to 180. If I subtract both sides by 90, and I combine the like terms here, I get 3x equals 90, so x equals 30. Now, if x is equal to 30, I'm trying to figure out measure angle t here. Well, measure angle t is currently 2x, right? So replace x with 30, so that's 2 times 30, 2 times 30. So measure angle t has to be 30 degrees. Uh, that is incorrect because 2 times 30 is 60 degrees. There you go. Sorry about that. There you go. So measure angle T is 60 degrees, not 30. Whoops. All right. Hopefully you understand how to do that problem because you can figure out how to do number 26 on your own. Okay. All right. And then these two, we have a quadrilateral uh, as part of our circle. You have to understand when you have a quadrilateral, the opposite angles are congruent. So I know it's kind of weird to figure out which ones are the opposite angles, but W and T are opposite angles, and then Z and R are opposite angles, okay? So how do I figure out measure angle Z? Okay, so measure angle Z is 2X plus 30, and Z is, you know, opposite to R. So I do 2x plus 30. Oh, one thing to note. Sorry, I, I, I said that those two, um, two, those two angles are opposite to each other. But what? Now what, right? Uh, so if these two angles are opposite to each other, you have to add those two expressions and equal to 180 degrees because those angles are supplementary, okay? So all I have to do is 2x plus 30 plus 4x. So 2x plus 30 plus 4x equal 180 degrees. I'm gonna combine the like terms and I'm gonna subtract both sides by 30. So I have 6x equals 150. Now. 
I'm gonna put this in my calculator, 150 divided by six, which is 25. Okay, so X is 25, but that's not my answer. I need to figure out what measure angle Z is. So all I gotta do is I'm gonna plug that in. So it's measure angle Z equals two times 25 plus 30. Two times 25 is 50 plus 30, that's 80 degrees. That's how you figure out measure angle Z, okay? Uh, so now that you figured that out, go ahead and do the same for 30. Uh, if I look at 30 right now, what are the opposite angles? Okay, so J and G are opposite angles, and then H and K are opposite angles, okay? So there you go. Hopefully this uh, video helps.